2023's Enduro Bike of the Year test was incredibly tight. How many times have we recycled the words picking a winner this year has been the toughest yet since the inception of Bike of the Year? A lot, probably every year since the Bike of the Year began. But this year, working out which Enduro bike could rightfully take top honors was possibly the toughest decision I've had to make in all my years of testing. However, there was one that just kept impressing me lap after lap. So which bike won my heart? Stay tuned to find out, but before I get into it, make sure you subscribe if you value the independent reviews. So, how did I test these bikes? After months of hammering all manners of trail here in the UK, ranging from steep natural tech through to high-speed bike park tracks, I finally picked my top three. The Nukeproof Mega 297 Elite Carbon, Merida's 160 6000, and the YT Kappa 29 Core 4. It was such a tough job to narrow them down that the UK just didn't cut it. So to narrow things down and find the best of the best, all three bikes needed some savage Ligurian rock beneath their tires. Honestly, we had to go. I had an inkling of which bike might shine brightest, but it wasn't until I hammered them down the unforgiving trails surrounding Dolce Aqua that I could crown a winner once and for all. The very premise of an Enduro bike is all about compromise and finding the right balance of ingredients to ensure it can perform just about anywhere. Key to this, I'd argue, is the geometry and casting an eye over the numbers, it's clear to see bigger variations between the bikes compared to our finalists in 2022. You can watch via the card above if somehow you've missed it. Back to 2023 and the YT's Capra 29 is the only bike sporting 29 inch wheels at both ends, but it does boast the shortest reach here with the medium frame measuring in at just under 450 mil. The slack 64 degree head angle helps to kick the front wheel out enough to produce a front centre of 800 millimetres. Perhaps given the bigger rear wheel, the rear centre or effective chainstay length is the longest of the three bikes at a smidge under 440 mil. As the name suggests, the Nukeproof Mega 297 is built around the on-trend mullet wheel setup with a larger 29 inch front wheel and smaller 27 and a half in the rear. It offers a bit more in terms of reach compared to the Capra 29 with 455mm on offer, though the head angle is almost identical. I measured that at 63.9 degrees and the front centre is almost identical too. Of all three bikes though, it's the Merida's numbers that are likely to get your eyebrows raised. Our mid-size frame had a reach of 470mm, a slack head angle of 63.7 degrees and a very generous 415mm front centre. Like the Mega, the 160 also has a smaller 27.5 rear wheel, and both bikes have more compact rear centers than the Capra 29 at 435mm. But Enduro bikes aren't just about the descents, so of course they'll need to feel comfortable when you're seated and climbing up the hills. Both the Capra 29 and Mega 297 have very similar effective seat tube angles at 77.5 degrees, though the Mega offers a little more in terms of top tube length at 593mm versus the Capra's more compact 586mm. While steep, they're not super radical, especially when compared to the Merida, which takes the cake with its 79 degree seat angle as the steepest on test, with a 589mm effective top tube sitting almost smack between the other bikes. Adjustable geometry is becoming more and more prevalent, so it's somewhat surprising that only two offer some form of geometry adjustment and they both work in different ways. YT uses a flip chip at the base of the shock that gives 0.3 degrees of adjustment at the head and seat tube angle, while altering bottom bracket height by 5 mil. Comparatively, the adjustment on the 160 allows you to switch between the 27.5 rear wheel that comes as standard or a bigger 29 inch hoop and is designed to preserve the geometry if you do make that switch. While both the Mega and Capra are available as either full 29ers or mixed wheel size bikes, you can't simply switch the real wheels to make this happen. When it comes to suspension travel, things are fairly evenly matched. Both the YT and Nukeproof deliver 165mm of rear wheel travel and both are delivered via four bar linkage variations with a pivot on the chainstays. 
Just like the geometry though, the Merida is a little different. It not only gets a little more travel, rocking 171 mil with that 27 and a half rear wheel fitted, but it relies on flex in the seat stays rather than a physical pivot back there, making the 160 a single pivot with a linkage actuated shock, something we don't normally see on longer travel bikes. All three frames should work with coil sprung shocks too, just in case you decide to swap the air sprung units that come as standard with these builds. Given our rather spendy price bracket, it's no surprise to see that all the bikes here use carbon frames. Thankfully, each brand has slapped on plenty of integrated rubberized protection to help prevent damage, as well as quieten any nasty chain slap. While the cables on every bike here are routed internally through internal tubes to make re-threading them that bit easier, the 160s do enter through the headset, which may put some folk off. Now, even if you don't like that, there are even more frame features on the Merida, which should help make up for that. There's some internal frame storage accessed via the underside of the down tube, a neat little Allen key with a four and six mil bits that pops into the rear axle and a multi-tool stashed underneath the saddle. Just like a bike's geometry, how you spec a bike needs to be very carefully considered. This is especially important for enduro bikes. Go too light and risk reliability issues, too heavy and the bike could feel too sluggish. In YT's case, the Capra Core 4 shows little in the way of compromise and sports a seriously draw-worthy spec. Sure, it's a touch pricier than the other bikes here, but the spec is more than reflective of that, even considering its direct-to-consumer sales model. A Fox Factory 38 fork and X2 shock offer loads of adjustment, as well as a buttery smooth performance, while SRAM's X01 Eagle gearing and fancy code RSC brakes, along with the Renthal bar and stem combo, give a very collar and cuffs factory race feel and look. YT do use their own Postman dropper post, which on their medium test bike doesn't offer enough drop for my tastes. Another highlight are the superb Crank Brother Synthesis Enduro alloy wheels. Given their differing sales model, neither the Nukeproof Mega nor Merida 160 can match the YT in terms of high-end componentry. The Nukeproof sports Fox Dampers 2, and although the 38 Performance Elite fork doesn't get the Kashima stanchion coating, as seen on the YT, the Grip 2 damper offers the same amount of adjustments. The performance level X2 shock is a little more limited though, but still feels great. Nukeproof have bumped the Mega 297 Carbon Elite up in price for 2023, and the electronic SRAM GX Eagle access drivetrain might help explain some of this. The own brand Horizon V2 wheels and Nukeproof finishing kit are well priced and a really safe bet though, working well and giving a cohesive aesthetic. Cash may have been clawed back a bit by specking the SRAM DB8 brakes, but more on those later. The Merida spec might be the least flashy here on paper, but it's a properly safe bet across the board. Shimano's SLX brakes and gearing with the race face crank set take care of stopping and going, while RockShox supply a Zeb Select fork and Super Deluxe Select Plus rear shock. While Merida's own brand kit does the job nicely when it comes to finishing kit, it's their dropper post that really catches the attention. That's because you can alter the drop anywhere from 30mm to a staggering 230mm. The mechanism did score our post and the performance has deteriorated very slightly in the three months of use, however. Thankfully, there's no worries when it comes to tyre choice, with all three bikes each using Maxxis Asagai tyres up front and the Minion DHR2s at the back with the Max Grip and Max Terra compounds respectively. It's not just the treads and compounds that are sorted, the casings match up to the requirements too, which isn't always the case. Nukeproof uses the tougher double down casing at both the front and rear, Merida uses XO Plus at the front and double down at the back, while YT opted to go for the full XO Plus, which we found to work well, especially for lighter riders. While easily the most fun bit about riding bikes like these is going downhill, you do of course need to get to the top first to earn your turns. Thanks to the tyres I've already mentioned, none of the bikes here feel like lightweight race whippets when fighting against gravity's pull, but one bike does make life easier going uphill than the others. That bike is the Merida 160. That steep seat tube really sits you up on the bike with your hips over the bottom bracket for comfortable pedaling as well as distributing your weight more evenly between the wheels. We never once struggle with the front wheel lifting even on steep pitches. Then of course there's the suspension. When sitting down and spinning the cranks the 160's suspension stays very stable with next to no bob. 
That means the shock can be left fully open to ensure the rear wheel can easily move up and over trail obstacles as you ascend. You could be fooled into thinking that you're pedaling a short travel trail bike here, but those tires growling away will soon drag you back down to earth. Both the Capra 29 and Mega 297 sport comfortable seated positions for climbing too, but neither feel as sprightly as the Merida. On long drags, we regularly use the low speed compression lever on the YT and Nuke proof shocks to sit them higher in their travel and eliminate suspension bob. Flicking this lever improves efficiency, but it doesn't lock the shock out fully, ensuring it can still keep the wheel tracking over lumps and bumps. Once you've dragged yourself to the top, it's time to let rip and descend like your hair's on fire. Dive into twisty natural single track and the YT's easygoing nature really comes to the fore. This bike is simply a doddle to get on and ride fast. Setup takes minutes and as soon as you're done, riding at pace just feels comfy from the get-go. It holds speed well and offers enough pop and agility that there's never a dull moment, even if the gradient mellows out. The Nuke Proof feels meatier, brawnier, more stable and lower slung than the YT, but it's still just as much fun on tamer trails. Once again though, it's the Merida that surprises here. While the geometry feels more stretched out than both of the other contenders, the suspension offers just as much, if not more, support. You can really drive your weight down through the bike as you pump an undulation or land the backside of a jump, and it will simply rock it forwards. This turn of speed actually feels a little disconcerting initially, but once you get used to it, you can really start to squeeze every ounce of speed from a trail without even turning the pedals. Sling these three into steep, technical, brake-dragging terrain and they'll continue to impress, but at the same time, the chinks in their armour start to appear. The Mega's DB8 brakes just don't offer the same smooth feel and modulation that the Shimano SLX or Code RSC brakes have in abundance on the 160 and Cap the 29 respectively. Instead, they're a little more binary in operation and lack the same level of power. We actually upped our rotors to 220mm from the stock 200mm ones, which did boost overall punch but didn't rectify the feel issues. The Mega earned some points back though when it comes to the steeps compared to the YT. When it came to slithering through near vertical turns at speed, we felt more planted on both the Mega and 160 compared to the Capra 29, which just felt a little taller and not quite as confident. Being a full-blown 29er might be a contributing factor, but it's also not quite as stretched out and the bottom bracket sits marginally higher than the others. One thing that does have a big impact on how it feels on steep trails is how tall the seat post is. With only 125 mm of drop, there's just not enough to get that post out the way and low enough when it gets steep, which is a real shame, though of course it is fixable at a price. On faster paced, really rocky trails, when the hits come thick and fast, all the bikes here feel very self-assured, but for varying reasons. The YT is comfortable with easily the most sensitive and smoothest fork of the three, and it carries speed impressively. However, the rear suspension doesn't feel quite as plush as on the Mega, which despite having that same 165mm of squish at the rear, feels like it has more depth to its travel, isolating the rider more from the chunder beneath the tyres. The Merida on the other hand offers more feedback through the torque carbon chassis, though the suspension still does a great job of muting the terrain impressively well, letting you hold tricky lines at speed. Like the Nuke Proof, it doesn't flinch when things get really rowdy, but a more connected trail feel coupled with the stable geometry just makes you want to attack even harder. With so many good bikes in this category this year, picking a winner has been harder than ever. It was the Merida 160 6000 that surprised us early on during back-to-back -back testing, and it continued to do so no matter what type of terrain lay beneath its tires. That's not to say the YT and Nuke Proof didn't though. While the YT's easygoing nature and impressive all-round credentials make it a surefire recommendation, so do the Nuke Proof's composure and stability when things really kick off especially when it comes to tackling seriously steep tech. But it was the Merida's proportions, supportive suspension and electrifying ride feel that finally clinched it for us. It confidently tackled some of the gnarliest trails around Dolce Aqua, skimming over jagged rocks and drifting through loose turns at serious pace. And after all that, it had to be the winner. We would love to know what you think, so be sure to let us know your views in the comments and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on the rest of our riveting Bike of the Year content. A massive thank you has to go out to Stefano at Supernatural Trails Dolce Aqua in Italy, Crank Brothers for their pedals and shoes, Met Helmets, Bluegrass Protection, Facom Tools and Bike Park Wales for their continued support.